Hello, everyone. It is Brett from the Mr. Top Step Trading Team, and it is Sunday, March 26th. So we've just wrapped up a pretty hectic week here in the trading world. Um, lots of concerns with the Fed, the Treasury, uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's comments, bank worries, pretty much everything under the sun. And um, I just I, I want to take a look at a couple of stocks here. Looks like you can see on the watch list on the right, it's a little over a dozen names. I won't go through them super specifically. I just want to kind of flip through them. Um, you can look at a million different things for a recession, right? I mean, um, uh, God, there's a million economic indicators. There's a million macro discussions. I'm not really a big macro guy. Um, I per I personally find that I get too wrapped up in the macro stuff or when I used to, you know, try to play in the macro world. I just got too too caught up in it and and it was just much easier for me to follow the price action and, and what the market is saying to me um and now the, the tough part here is the market depending on which markets you follow are signaling different things and you're also getting a don't fight the fed and a don't fight the trend uh kind of ideologies clashing with each other typically in a don't fight the fed scenario um you, you don't want to fight the bigger picture of what they're doing. In this case, they're they're raising interest rates, and uh, you know you don't want to really be necessarily buying into that. Just like when they're they're super dovish, you don't want to be shorting into it. But right now, that's not what the market's been doing. Um, so that's leaving traders in kind of a quandary here. Um, did they fight the trend, or did they fight the Fed? Because Right now they're 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 in a clash, but uh, but I just I want to take a look at a couple things here. I don't want it to be a super long video, but this is a, a weekly look at the QQQ. You can see this clean breakout retest of the uh, downtrend area, held all the key weekly moving averages. You can see a little bit of caution here uh, from last week, pushed above the February high, dip back under, kind of pausing at this uh, this this pink measure here is actually a, a VWAP that goes. All the way back to the all-time high um, from November 2021. So a little bit of caution in there, but um, the one I actually the names I want to look at are much more consumer-oriented, travel-related sort of expenditures that um, you would think would be doing better if the economy was going to really be roaring here. Um, and actually, these names ex did much much better. I mean, you can see right here, TripAdvisor. It looks like it ripped off six or seven weeks uh, straight gains in it. it oh, whoops. And then a couple of weekly charts. So on the daily, you can see how explosive of a move this was. Um, and I'm not cherry picking trip uh, here. It just happened to be the first on the list. Um, it's up 60% in the first couple of weeks of the, of the year. And now we're getting this big pullback down just toward the, the 20, 2022 lows. And it's not, um, super uncommon in a lot of the other names. Las Vegas Sands um, has held up much better than some of the others. MGM, Wynn especially, but you're starting to see MGM, Las Vegas Sands, and Wynn. I don't know if anyone's been to Vegas in the last six months. I have. It was absolutely nuts. I've never seen the strip busier than than when I was there. It felt like it was a Super Bowl weekend. And I mean, if I'm being completely honest, it's not exactly uh, my scene. Um, the super busy Las Vegas weekend, but um, just reporting analytically here or anecdotally, sorry, um, it was just, I mean, it was incre incredibly busy. So to see this rip um, was not surprising whatsoever, but starting to see some of these relative strength names kind of cooling off. That's Las Vegas Sands one more time. Airlines were incredibly strong to start off the year. You can see this big, big move in, um, in early January, a lot of accumulated volume there. And then just easy come, easy go. I mean, it huge rip, huge dip, and and now here you got Delta Vine trying to trying to find its footing. United, same thing. Um, excuse some of these um, <clears throat> uh, some of these other trend lines and stuff. I didn't really clean up the charts ahead of time. Um, American, same deal. This actually, I think, was the biggest winner of the major airlines, up forty four percent in like two weeks. Um, Carnival, same thing. Maybe a false breakdown, if you want to call it that, out, out of that zone. But um, again, another kind of these just these deep pullbacks off the February highs. It's um, Expedia, 
What does everyone use to book their trips? Expedia, TripAdvisor. Expedia, I believe, also owns VRBO. Um, automakers, same deal. Ford just keeps putting in lower highs. Um, kind of holding this 11 area, but GM, similar story, just kind of keeps bumping down into here. Now, to, to broaden out a little bit, oh, actually, let's do one more. Let's do Disney. Um, similar vibe, even though it's got the whole streaming thing going on. Bob Iger's back, the reorgs here. Um, big cost cutting efforts, but not, I mean, it's not all that fun. It's 10 bucks off the low, you know, at this point where it was, you know, it had at one point screamed higher and bearish and golfer after earnings. And sorry, I'm just kind of spitballing some of these, but I, I just, I was going through charts this weekend and this kind of action started jumping out to me. And a lot of the more travel related names, even though we heard from American express, we can pull up them. Um, you know, travel's doing great. They tend to have higher paying customers um, or wealthier customers, but you know, Visa kind of, you kind of heard the same thing from all the major credit card companies. This is a weekly of Visa. It's kind of in some ways looks like that NASDAQ chart from earlier. Here's MasterCard again, similar cleared this sort of downtrend area. Um, you want to pull something up like that, you know, it, it broke out, held it. Now it's, you know, trying to find its footing again. Um, kind of broadening out a little bit here though. Um, oopsie daisies. We got crude oil, you know, broke down to new 52 week lows, um, on the weekly found its footing right here on the 200 week. I'm not sure if you guys saw that on Twitter. I know I flagged, flagged this crude chart. It must've been two weeks ago. Cause I, it was before this breakdown said, if this, if this, uh, 72 50 fails, then we got the 200 week on deck. And so far it's finance footing there, but you know, I mean, that, I mean, that's not bullish price action for, for crude. Um, this is the retail ETF, the XRT, same deal. Um, just, you know, being pounded down off the highs. If you, obviously if you flush through the XRT, there's a couple of retailers doing really good. Alta, um, Alta looks great or has looked great. It's been kind of consolidating here off the, after the recent run, Dick sporting goods, another one that has, um, traded really well. This one just hit all time highs and, uh, and it's, it's been trading really well, but it's been far and few between the names that have been trading exceptionally well. Here's Macy's again. I'm sorry for the, some of the, the prior markups on the chart. I'm just kind of, I'm going through these, um, you know, as, as they come to me, uh, Kohl's, you know, this one's actually down to new low, uh, new 52 week lows. So, I mean, even, even the quality names, guys, I'm not just picking on the, on the ones that are struggling. I mean, look at Home Depot, you know, it's, that's come down and it doesn't have much life. Lowe's, similar deal. This is into a key uptrend mark. Um, doesn't look as bad on the daily, but it's below every daily moving average it's got. I mean, that's not telling the, the greatest story. Target, I'm sorry, I'll give you a second to take that chart in. Um Walmart, I mean, none of these names are, are really inspiring a lot of confidence. Then we'll go flip down to the banks. That is obviously has a kind of more of a sector specific incidents weighing on on it. Bank of America trading incredibly poorly. Um, the regionals trading horrendously. Um, so, you know, we can't beat up on the banks too much, but, you know, pop out to the weekly you know, I kind of held last week's low, which is good, but tried to go back up through the 200 week and failed to hold it. You know, this is a pretty key measure going back, you know, several years. You can see where it's been support and resistance and regained it. Major support, major support. So um, that's going to be kind of a key for me going forward. And again, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, the world's ending. We're going to a deep, dark recession, but, you know everything's coming to an end. I mean, I'm kind of curious just what you guys think too, you know, um, leave a comment below, like, you know, what do you guys think where we're headed? Where do you think we're going? I, I mean, we're going into a tightening, we've been in a tightening cycle and it seems like credit is getting even tighter, but I'm not really a pessimist at heart. I'm an optimist at heart. I'm a bull market guy at heart. Um, but that being said, I don't, I don't buy, um, 
I don't buy blindly, um, except for for long term accounts, you know, 401k type of things as as the bull market does win out over the long term. And you can actually kind of see hovering right here how the XLF is at a very key area of this prior breakout level over like 31 ish, if you want to call it whatever you would 31, 3150. But, you know, resistance going into uh, the COVID high and then the breakout post COVID. Um, you can see, yeah, you can see these are kind of a little older marks on here, but failed rate at the 61.8, interesting. Um, last thing I have on here is just that spread, the uh, the the two-year, 10-year spread. I try to clean some of this up here a little bit. Uh, you can see that um, prior marking, the, the spread went negative on July 6th. Um, so we've been stuck in this negative mix for a, quite a long time. Um, Again, I'm not going to be, I'm not a super macro guy by any means, but um, just some sloppy price action across the board, truthfully. Um, S&P's has been kind of consolidating this tight little range. And again, it's it, there's some positives. Like I, I'm, I'm definitely not saying this is all negative. There's the semis, incredible action. Of, semiconductors are probably like my top followed sector. So um, to see them trading that well is really encouraging. Again, higher low, higher low, higher low, or I'm well, just higher low, higher low, but off of this low. Um, broke out over over downtrend resistance here. It's struggling with a lot of moving averages. There's there's definitely some nitpicking that can be done. The charts are are tough. They're sloppy. They're choppy. Um, but yeah, I'm just I, honestly I, I wanted to do a video because I was curious, um, kind of covering some of these travel stocks, the airlines, the automakers. The I guess what you would call the companies that would struggle in a recession, um, or when, or struggle with consumer spending coming under pressure, it would be you know people taking flights, people taking vacations, going to Disney, buying new cars. Um, so I don't know. I'm just curious. I want to hear what you guys think. What your what your thoughts are? If you think it's nuts, if you think it's reasonable, um, I don't know. Leave leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching.